Howdy folks, and welcome back. Now, salt may just be a seasoning that sits in a jar in your kitchen doing nothing and only putting it in soup when it's unflavored because you suck at cooking. But salt is far more interesting than that. From being an expensive resource considered as white gold, religiously important food, an ingredient used to mummify bodies. Now, I like salt as much as the next guy, and I can see why it became such an important thing to us humans and animals, since we need it for like electrolyte balance, nervous system, muscle function, fluid balance, and digestion, and a whole lot more. Without it, we could only imagine what the world would be like if we never discovered it. I like to imagine some guy in the mid-neolithic period seeing a block of this stuff and licking it and he was all like, <laughs> My throat getting numb already. And now, you're sitting there gorging a whole bag of potato chips while watching this video. So before we begin, I would like to mention that this video wouldn't be able to like cover as much of the salt that there is that we know of. So if you're expecting your favorite niche salt, then you're out of luck. So let's see salt and its unique characteristics. I am so sorry. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Either way, let's begin with the history of salt, starting with its formation. Salt is an ancient mineral, and yes, salt is a mineral and even a crystal that has existed on our planet for billions of years. It likely formed as a result of the gradual mixing of various chemicals including sodium and chlorine along with other minerals over millions of years actually. The formation of oceans where salt is typically found played a significant role in this process. Additionally, the erosion of rocks over many, many, many years has contributed to the abundance of salt in our oceans. Table salt is definitely the most popular type of salt out there, and chances are, you probably had some earlier. Table salt or sodium chloride or this thing here, are usually made in factories by either A. Collecting seawater or brine, evaporating salt water, purification to remove impurities and debris, harvesting the evaporated product, and eventually processing the product based on your preferred taste and fineness. B. Mining. Salt isn't just harvested from the sea, and it could also be found in deep deposits underground and they typically tend to be more expensive due to the process and potential dangers of extracting it. Here's some common methods. Drilling. So, they can grab large chunks of salt, crushing and grinding so the salt can be turned into powder for ease of use. Purification, once again, to remove dirt and debris, drying to remove moisture, and eventually, the packaging. I cannot say remove, or removing. So cut me some slack. Table salt has a lot of variety, as I said, like your typical cheap salt, the more expensive kosher salt, and pink Himalayan salt, which doesn't actually come from the Himalayas. Oh, and before I move on, here's some quick salt mine facts. The oldest mine in operation is the Wieliszka Wieliszka Salt Mine. Oh, it's a Polish mine, alright, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so if you're interested. The oldest ever found was the Hochstadt Salt Mine located in Austria. It is dated to be around during the Late Bronze Age, around 1500 BC. So it's old. As weird as it sounds, salt does belong in sweets. I mean, ever heard of salted caramel? Yeah, I think I put my point. Anyways, chefs typically use this thing called uh freaking goddamn pretentious French words. Um Fleur de Sel, which is a very delicate salt and has a pyramid-like structure. It is mainly used in chocolates, pastries, and of course, caramel. In snowy countries, you would expect the roads to be just a little frozen after a few hours and would actually cause dangers as vehicles would just slide on its icy surface, causing a lot of damage and danger. So, to combat this, countries would typically put a bunch of salt in their roads to minimize the buildup of ice. Now, I know what you're thinking, wouldn't that make the ice colder since my uncle puts salt on ice and it melts slower and becomes more cold, right? Well, I don't really know. Pickling salt is typically more pure and less prone to clumping while stored. As the name suggests, they are used to pickle either vegetables, fruit, meats, etc. when refrigeration isn't a thing yet. It was a common method of preserving food for centuries, probably for millennia, no, not maybe, for millennia. Used by the common folk, armies, travelers, like before the advent of canning technology. Using salt for pickling is rather easy actually, as you just dump loads of it in like an airtight container. 
and the idea was to draw it as much moisture so it would like spoil slower and we still do it today actually as it is just so easy you can do it at your home quite literally you know go home and like go pickle some fruit oh did i forget to mention it is also used to mummify humans If you're eating something or have a weak stomach, I suggest you skip this bit as it gets gruesome. Back in ancient Egypt and in other cultures, they would typically mummify a person's corpse after death using a salt known as natron, which is typically made of sodium carbonate and at least 10 water molecules. That has a formula that looks like this. Jesus Christ, is that, is that a goddamn GTA cheat code? Like, and also, you would only get mummified if you're like the wealthy, a pharaoh, a nobleman, or high priest. This was a complex ritual done by specialists with immaculate skill in order to best preserve a person's body. That's why scientists have an easy understanding of ancient Egyptian life so they can just study in their remains. The motives as to why they do it is, has to do with their belief of the afterlife and keeping that body that well ensures a person's journey will be more successful. And that's why Egyptian tombs like Ramses II, Tutankhamun and many more have so much artifacts, dried food and mummified animals so they can have something to bring in their journey to the afterlife. Salt isn't just used in cooking, but also in religious rituals spanning for millennia. Some notable uses of them are when you see like your neighbors put salt around their windows and doors to keep out unwanted spirits. Salt meeting, which is a lot more common worldwide. Salt lamps, which are like these things you see in your aunt's house, and they're supposed to like ward off negative energy and use in meditations and spiritual exercises and whatnot. As I mentioned in the intro, so it was seen as the form of white gold by many civilizations in the ancient and classical world. Now, white gold is mostly considered as cocaine. So it was seen as a valuable and luxurious commodity by many as it was quite versatile. Governments usually get their revenue on salt with good old taxing. Taxation is a form of theft. Free markets and free trade. Governments have a large monopoly in the salt trade slash industry for its abundance and popular use for the purposes I've listed not that long ago. Now since we're reaching the end of this video, I don't really know where to put these things so I'll just lump the rest in here. Now as we all know, seas or oceans usually have salt in them, if not, then it's fresh water. Duh. Our oceans have an average of 3.5% PPT or parts per thousand, though this may be a global average. You have to remember that our ocean is vast, so here's a list of average salinity levels per ocean, with the highest being the Dead Sea, located in Jordan Rift Valley, controlled by Jordan, Israel, and Palestine. I hope they're doing well. Person. Ah, I'm kill with an average of 30 to 35 percent or 300 to 350 parts per thousand which makes this one sea alone 9 to 10 times saltier than the average ocean i want you to think about that it's so salty in fact you can actually float in it if you try to swim though i wouldn't really recommend since getting some water on your eyes and mouth and it will burn you all right the reason as to why this happens is due to the lack of outlets and more water falls through it without it flowing out Thus, the higher concentration of salt. You've probably never heard of this before, and so do I. Brackish water are water that have the salinity with an intermediate level where fresh water and seawater meet. Brackish water typically has a salinity level of 0.5 to 30 ppt, although this depends on where it's located. Estuaries, coastal lagoons, and mangrove swamps, the largest of which is the Baltic Sea, bordered by many nations like Sweden, Finland, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Germany, and Denmark. Person ah, I'm kill with an average salinity level of 7 to 8 ppt. <laughs> well, as you can see, salt is a lot more complex than we thought of. From a basic spice to a resource where kingdoms would fight for, salt has a complex history just like anything in this planet. And oh, I only made this video since I didn't do my science homework as none of my classmates told me. And also me not asking. So to make up for it, I told my teacher that I would make a video about salt and here we are. What a journey. Anyways, I'm Martin Villanueva and I'll see you again someday.